Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the Kurt Class 3 trailer hitch receiver on a 2012 BMW X5. Now here we have our trailer hitch actually installed on our BMW and you can tell right away that it is a hidden cross tube. And what does that mean? Well, that's just going to have this receiving end actually sticking out of the fascia as the rest of it actually lives back where the original bumper support was. So that's really great because it gives you a nice clean OEM look. You don't have that bar hanging down and it's going to be a great option for all your accessories. Part of that being, this is a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. So that's gonna accept a ton of different accessories, whether it be a ball mount, a bike rack, or a cargo carrier. Now, something else you'll notice, it does have a 5 8 hitch pin hole, and that's gonna be great for putting our accessories in place and making sure they stay in place. Now, the hitch doesn't actually come with the pin and clip, but a lot of your accessories will actually have them included. And if you wanna pick up a locking one, we have plenty of options available here at eTrailer. Something else you'll see is we've actually added a four pole onto this. So this is gonna be great for towing trailers and your safety chain loops here are nice and open with the rolled style, allowing you to put a normal style hook or even a clevis style with really no issues. Now, speaking of towing, this does have a pretty solid weight capacity. In fact, you can tow a gross trailer weight rating of 6,000 pounds, which is gonna be the weight of your trailer plus the accessories loaded onto it. Now, your tongue weight, which is the downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube opening, is gonna be 600 pounds. So, your suspended accessories like your cargo carriers or bike racks, that's just kind of the weight that's pushing down on here. So, overall, those are some pretty solid numbers, but you do wanna check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what it's actually capable of before actually hooking up. Take the comparison of the vehicle's weight ratings with the hitch and take the lower of the two just to be safe. Let's get a few quick measurements here from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point of the rear fascia. It's gonna be right at about three and a half inches. And that's important to note for your fold up accessories. That way they don't make contact with your rear fascia when in that stowed position. Now, as far as your ground clearance goes, we're coming in at right about 14 inches, which is pretty decent. So you really shouldn't have any issues with the hitch making any contact, but when you have your loaded accessories that are suspended, like your bike rack or cargo carrier, keep in mind when you go up inclines, those will kind of dip down. So just something to keep in mind while you're hauling those around. Now, as far as installation goes on this, you're actually going to be replacing your impact bumper bar, and part of that is going to require pulling the rear fascia off. Now, this can get a little bit tricky as you have this tailgate kind of in the way, and some of the body clips are a little bit tricky, as with most BMWs are not exactly the easiest to work on. But you can watch my install video step by step and see how it's done, and that way we can get this hitch installed. So let's take a look at that now. To begin our installation, we're gonna first start by the wheel wells. There's gonna be two plastic rivets that we need to remove, and that way we can gain access to an eight millimeter bolt. Now to get these out, we're gonna to want to just take a small flat head and just kind of pry them out. And we will not be reusing these on installation. So if they break, which is very possible, that's okay. And if you're having trouble getting them pried out, a trim panel tool like this is really handy for being able to kind of get underneath them and get even pressure while pulling them out. So let's see if I can't get our pry tool in here. And there we go, there's one, and we'll get this one as well. And we're gonna need to repeat the same process on the other side. Now with those plastic rivets out, we can actually pull on this wheel well trim. And you can kind of use your fingers or a flat head and just kind of slowly pop these back. Now you don't wanna to go too far because if you crease this plastic, you might leave a permanent mark. But what we're looking for is this eight millimeter here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my socket and remove that. Now throughout this whole process, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we hold on to our hardware. That way we have it ready for reinstallation. So now that we have this side taken off, we're gonna repeat the same process on the other. Next, you're gonna to wanna to open your hatch and lower this tailgate just a little bit. And we're gonna be prying off this reflector. Now, uh, from previous installations on other BMW X5s, these are pretty notorious for breaking, just kind of the way that the des design of those clips are. There's no real easy way to actually pry these out. Um, but your best bet, take a plastic trim removal tool. Um, if you don't have these, you can actually pick these up here at eTrailer, and that way it's not gonna scratch the paint as we pry, but we're gonna try to get this thing popped out, and that's gonna gain us access to a bolt back there, which will actually allow us to lower the fascia out. 
I'm going to try putting pressure here and then I'm going to work on this back side as well and see if we can't get this whole thing to pop. So we were able to get this out and you can see that these slide directly in in a straight angle and you have this clip here so getting on the top here to try to push that tab back may help and then you have a metal clip here so getting this one first kind of giving pressure on this one and then pulling straight out is going to make it a lot easier again just take your time on here and if you do break it uh, it, it's very common on these so just take your time as much as you can and we're going to go ahead and get the other one removed as well So now we're going to go underneath the rear fascia and there's going to be six eight millimeter fasteners that kind of go along the edge here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those. So now while we're underneath the fascia, we're going to want to remove our electrical connections. That way when we pull the bumper out, the wiring isn't holding us back. So we can see this little clip here that's attached to this fascia mount. I'm just gonna push on the tab here and get this separated. Now there are clips on both sides, so you're gonna wanna pinch on this and you may just kinda have to work it a little bit until that separates. Now instruction manual tells us that 2011 to present, uh, you actually need to remove the taillights and that's not too hard to do. We'll simply just pull on this interior panel and that's gonna gain us access to eight millimeter bolts. There's gonna be three of them. You can see them on the studs here. We'll go ahead and remove those and then this whole taillight should actually pop out and that's gonna make it easier for us to unplug our taillight from there. So let's go ahead, we'll get these removed. You can actually just push on this panel and that should allow that tail light to kind of pop out. So now we'll just gently pull this out and our tail light here, the plug is going to be hard to see, but there's actually a clip that we'll have to kind of raise up with a flat head uh, to get this to separate. It looks like, um, let's see, we may be able to push in here as well. There we go. So pushing in on this tab and then giving it upward pressure that allows this to separate. So now let's go ahead and put our taillight in a safe location. And then we can go ahead and repeat the same process on the passenger side. So now we're getting ready to pull our fascia off, but a nice little step that you can do just to kind of prevent any damage on reinstallation is actually taking some painter's tape here and just running along the edge. Um, and basically all that's gonna do is put a little added layer of protection that way when the bumper is rubbing against the paint, potentially when you put this back on, it's not gonna actually scratch it. This will actually give it a fighting chance. That way we can get that bumper in and have no scratches. So I'm gonna just run this along, not only the fascia, but also um, along our rear quarter panel as well. You're gonna to wanna to grab an extra set of hands for pulling off your fascia as it can be cumbersome and you don't want this to drop. Something else I suggest is having a place set up to put your actual fascia. That way it's not gonna get scratched by falling over. So a nice cardboard box or maybe what your hitch came in is a good idea to just kind of lay that out. And to get the fascia off, we're gonna just peel back this wheel well liner here a little bit. Again, just kind of make sure you don't put too much pressure and just kind of grab along the actual uh, fascia portion and just with a little bit of pressure here we should be able to get these tabs to kind of pop out. I'm going to try to get my trim tool in here to kind of pry these tabs. They, uh, they're a little bit tricky to get to and you can't really see them so you're kind of just working along uh, just trying to find those points where they're at and then we'll try to put some pressure in here to get those tabs to unlatch. What we're seeing here you can see this slot that's where the locking tabs are actually going. So there's another one right here. So I'm just gonna take my trim panel tool or a small flat head. You could wrap it in tape just to be safe. Just pushing down on that, that should allow those locking tabs to come out. And so now with this side, we can go ahead and get the other one and we'll work the rest of the way out. 
Now, once we kind of move our way along, we may need to pry a little bit more on some of these clips uh, just to kind of get this rear fascia to pop out. So just be patient here. So we got that one. And once you have both sides kind of pried out, it's gonna make it a lot easier when we make it to this portion of the fascia as that should kind of pop out simultaneously. But you do wanna make sure you get both sides popped first. Opening up that little tailgate here is going to access these a lot easier. Um, so if you open that up, you can see these tabs here. Um, they're still kind of tricky to get this out, but just pry them out of the way. And then I'm going to just use my trim panel tool here and then just kind of pry them back. Even putting a little pressure on the bumper should help. There we go. Okay. So with your fascia removed, you can now set it on a safe location. So now we're gonna need to remove the bumper beam and there's gonna be four 18 millimeter nuts. There's one here, one here, and then there's actually two that are gonna be underneath these caps. These caps should just unscrew here. And you may need to move your tailgate as necessary to gain access to them. But now we can go ahead and get these removed. Now hold on to all this hardware as we remove them. And our bumper should stay in place because these studs are pretty long. So let's go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. So now with those 18 millimeter nuts removed, you're gonna wanna keep your tailgate at an open position or a 45, that way you can slide this out. But we should be able to kinda just wiggle this and get this out of place. Now this plastic here might be catching on that impact bar, so just kind of raise that up just slightly. And then we should be able to get this out. Now I notice here we do have uh, a wire that's attached just slightly, so we'll go ahead and pry this off before actually taking it all off. And we'll just kind of route this over that as to not pull the wire too much. And if we need to, we can actually remove the one on this side as well. Um, it just is a hook. So if you unhook that wire, that should give you plenty of room. We're ready to grab our hitch and put it in place. Your bumper beam is not actually gonna go back on as this is gonna replace it. Now, while doing this, I suggest having a conical tooth washer as well as one of your uh, nuts supplied in the hardware. Just kind of hand tighten it on once we get it in place and that's gonna keep it in place for the re remainder of putting the rest of the hardware on. Now the conical tooth washer, it does have teeth on one side. This is gonna need to press against the metal here and that's gonna kind of bite into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this in place. Slide these over the studs on both sides. Make sure your wire's not pinched. And that plastic actually pops out there, so don't, no worries if that does pop, but that actually kind of gave us a little bit more space here. Now it may be tight, so having a little rubber mallet to kind of persuade it on there might help. And I'm just gonna kind of put this one in place so I can hold that in without it falling. Took a little bit of persuading of just kind of wobbling it back and forth and that's gonna allow it to kind of slide over those threads. But uh, now that we have both sides hand tightened on, we can go ahead and get the remainder of our hardware on. I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten these down. Now these are gonna be a 19 millimeter socket. 
So uh, I'm gonna be using an impact here. You can use a ratchet with no problem, um, but you don't have to get too crazy as far as tightening because we're gonna go back with our torque wrench and make sure they're torqued down properly. But for now, let's kind of zip this in place. So now we have them tightened down, we're gonna to wanna to go back with our torque wrench and use the torque settings that are in the instruction manual. Now, if you don't have a torque wrench, we have these here at E-Trailer, or generally you could rent them at an auto parts store. But this is gonna be important because it's gonna make sure that those nuts are snug, yet uh, not putting too much stress on the threads or gonna come loose over time. So we'll just go back to all of these and just make sure that they're properly torqued. And before we get our rear fascia back on, we're actually gonna have to trim this out as this is where the hitch is gonna live. And so it's gonna cause some clearance issues. So I've gone ahead and just use the measurements from the instruction manual. Now you can use a pair of shears. Um, I'm gonna be using a Dremel here and I'm just gonna kind of cut this space out and then go back and sand it down. So now I'm just gonna go back here with a file and just kind of clean up these burrs. Um, if you don't have a file, you can actually take the edge of a, a pocket knife or a utility knife and kind of just scrape it along this and it'll take those burrs out, but just kind of make it nice and clean looking before we put our fascia up. Now when putting your fascia back on, you're gonna simply lift the tailgate a little bit here. We'll get this center section kind of plugged into place. Now on the side, this is gonna to wanna to wrap around those uh, fender liners, so you may have to pry those back a little bit, um, but we should be able to feed this on pretty easily. And once we get these ones snapped in, we'll just slowly work our way going to the outside, kinda of in the reverse order that we took it off. Now you may remember when we pulled off our fender liner here, uh, we had to pry off those rivets and that causes them to break. So in the kit, they actually have these little plastic push pins here. It's got a little Phillips head screwdriver uh, or Phillips head right here. So we'll just put these in, tighten them up and those are gonna replace those old rivets. A lot of times you can just hand tighten these down or even kind of push them in and that should hold it in place. So now with everything back in place, our hitch is now installed and we're ready to hook it up to some bike racks, cargo carriers, or even tow a small trailer. And that was a look at installation of the Kurt Class 3 trailer hitch receiver on a 2012 BMW X5.